So welcome to Google Friday, everyone. We're so excited that you are a part of this and that you are here today. Um, we are doing this every Friday, so we are glad that you are with us. Um, we have a very exciting presentation today done by our wonderful Kristen Waring. If you have any questions, you guys can go ahead and leave comments. I will be moderating today. My name is Mariah Guillen. Um, so just put any comments down. We will be answering probably at the end of the um, presentation. But if you have any questions, comments during this time, please feel free um, to ask them. And if you could also put your mics on mute, that would be great. So I'm going to turn this over to Kristen. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you very much, Mariah. Happy Friday, everyone. And thank you for joining us for our next installment of Google Friday webinars. Um, I'm really happy to see the number of a good turnout here today. Um, so I've got some exciting stuff for you. I'm going to be presenting on getting creative with Google Slides. Um, so as Mariah said, please make sure your microphone is muted unless you have a question so that we don't get the background noise um, from your house. I know sometimes it's a little difficult when we're all working from home, but we're all learning to make the best of it. So that's exciting. All right. So we're going to move on here. And the first thing we're going to talk about is what we are not going to do today. So today's webinar is not about how to build a Google slide presentation. OK, hopefully most of you have some experience using Google Slides, whether for your own lessons or activities or with your students. Uh, if you don't, if you've never used this program before, it's it's a lot of fun. It can, and we're going to go over some really interesting things that you can do with it. Um, however, there are a lot of videos on YouTube, just basic how-to videos on how to get started with this. Um, chances are you probably know somebody that is using Google Slides if you need a little help. And my information will be up at the end. So if after this presentation you need more help with getting started with Google Slides, feel free to send me an email and I'll help as best I can. So let's move on to the next part here. So the first thing that I want to talk about is templates. Okay, Some of you may or may not have used the templates in Google Slides before. Let's just click here and we're going to go, this is going to take me into my drive. So starting a new Google slide presentation can be done a number of ways. One, from any of your Google um, pages, from your inbox, from your drive, from various other places, you'll see this app launcher, the nine squares up in the top right hand corner. You can always, from any of those, click on this and you can just choose Google Google Slides from the drop down menu. You can do that for any of the other G Suite apps as well, like Docs and Sheets. Um, generally, though, what I like to do is I like to do it from my Google Drive because then I can put that slide deck wherever I want it to go. So I will generally go into a folder, and I'm just going to use my training folder here. If that's where I want it to be located so that I can find it, I'm going to just open up that folder and then I'm going to use the button here where it says new. I'm going to click that and you go down here, you see Google Slides. Now, if I just click on Google Slides, the words, it's going to open up just a plain old blank Google Slide document um, and I have to start from scratch. But if I want to use templates, I'm going to go to the arrow here and just hovering over it, it gives me this drop down menu. And from there, I'm going to choose from a template. Okay, brings us to two tabs. The first one says an adult distance education. If you're using this um, from another domain besides an NM Delt email, you won't see these templates. Okay, um, the fun thing too that I just want to point out is as you're going along, if you're using Google Slides and you find a template that's not in here. Um, or you create one that you really like, you can always go here. Everybody has access to this to submit a template. So you can click on that and follow the directions and it'll create a template, a blank one, for anybody 
in the DELT domain that wants to use it to use. So it's a fun way to share with your other instructors. The one that I want to go to right now is the general tab. So there's the two tabs up here at the top. We're going to go to general. And this is divided into several sections. Um, you have the first section up here is education. There's personal templates. There's business temp or work templates down at the bottom. Um, and I encourage you to come in here and just kind of explore because just because something says it's a field trip template doesn't mean that that's the only thing that you can use it for. Okay, so um, we're going to look at a couple of these, but the one that I wanted to show you today is this one called flashcards. Since one of the things that we're all looking for are ways to interact with our students online. So if we click on this flashcard template, it takes just a second for it to load. And it opens it up. And most of these templates are set up to just be point and click. It's got boxes. It's got things that are already made in here. And you just change those to personalize it to the way that you want it. So for instance, if maybe I don't want Spanish quiz flashcards, um, I'm going to put geometry because that's something that I just finished with my students doing a review. So instead of Spanish, I might want geometry flashcards. And down here where it says Spanish 101, I can click on this and I can change this to say um, high set math or whatever I want to put in there. Or I can just delete that text box altogether. But whatever you decide to do, the images and the wording on these templates are all updatable or you can all um, make it personal. So there I've changed that. If I wanted to change colors, I could, but I kind of like the colors in this app. So let's look at the second one, the second slide. So I'm going down to the second slide here. Generally, in a uh, template app or a, a template, uh, the first couple of pages will give you any directions that you need to know for filling in this, this template. Here, it's just got a quick tip. It says, try right clicking on a photo and using replace image to build your own flashcards. Okay, so I'm going to show you the difference here because there's a couple of ways to insert an image into your slide presentation. And generally, the way that we do that if we're starting from scratch is we're going to go up here where it says into our toolbar and we're going to choose insert and choose an image. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say insert an image from my computer. Okay, You can also insert images from the web. But for today, we're going to look at a picture of me. So I'm going to choose this top image here that came up and I'm just going to say open. But look at that. It makes it big. It's kind of clunky. It doesn't fit in that box that was already here on the screen. So I could take this image and I could play with it and I could turn it and try to get it to fit in there, but it's time consuming. So on the templates, instead of doing that and putting a new picture, what you can do is you just right click on the place where the image goes so that you get this menu and you're going to scroll down to the very bottom. It says replace image. So we're going to use that same image. I'm just going to go over here to the menu that pops up. I'm going to say upload from my computer. And I'm going to choose the same image that I chose before and say open. And look at that. It opens it right in that same box that's already set up in your template. So you can, um, if you don't like this, sometimes it'll make it too big so it doesn't fit in there because maybe your image is much more, much larger than the space. So what you can do is you can also double click on this and it will show you if the image has been cropped at all. And then you can take your image and you can drag it to different places and get the part of that image that you like the best. Or maybe I don't want that whole image. I can make my image a little bigger and then move it around and you can see the frame here, so maybe I just want to get that part and have it cropped off. And then click outside of the box, and there's your image 
it's a whole lot less hassle than trying to move that bigger image and resize it and re reshape it to fit. So on this particular slide, I can also go down here and I can click on the words and maybe I just want to change it to my name. Okay, so now I've personalized this slide. I've, I haven't changed a whole lot except the details. Let's go to this next slide. And what I want to show you is what it looks like to the students when they're presenting, when you're presenting it. So if I make this larger, what they have right here is obviously a pineapple. Remember, these are flashcards. So the student is going to see this. And then when you click on, you could use this as a discussion tool. Okay, everybody that's in this online classroom, tell me what you think the word is that goes along with this pineapple. How do you say it in Spanish, if that's what we're working on? Okay, then we can click on that and there you go, there's your answer. Okay, so templates give you guidelines on ways to put these together. Okay, there's a car. If I click on it for the next one, there's the answer. So you can make this into your own personal flashcards. And very easily too. The other thing that I like about this is once you have set up a template for something that you're studying in your classroom with your students, it's very easy to just make a copy of that slide presentation. You're just going to go up here to file and say make a copy. You can copy the entire presentation or you can copy selected slides. I would say just copy the entire presentation and then you've got a brand new one that's already got some of your personalization on it that you can go through and update for a completely different topic. So it makes it very easy to use. Um, you can also add, so this has a limited number of slides on here, but let's say I wanted to make another set of green slides. Okay, I can go to slide number five here. I can right click on it and I can say duplicate slide. That just makes another one exactly like it. And then I can drag it to the location in my thumbnails where I want it to be. So I can add on to this deck using the same format that they've used in the rest of this presentation. So you could really do this with as many slides as you wanted. Okay. Do you guys have any questions on that particular template? Oh, and there, I got to remember not to click on, um, let's open that back up again, not to click on the X, but to click on the back arrow. So if you're exploring templates rather than updating them, just use the back arrow and it's probably not going to work now because I wasn't in there. So let's go back here and say new slides from a template. Okay. So as you're exploring, use the back arrow and not the X to, to get out of those. So we looked at flashcards. Um, I just want to show you, you can look at some of these different ones. So for instance, this lesson plan I thought was really interesting. If you want to share, use it to create a lesson plan or share it with your colleagues. Let's let this one open up. And keep in mind, these are ideas. They're not set in stone. So you can always add your own slides into these templates as well. But if you look at this, it just has guidelines. So who's your audience? You can update that. If you don't need that slide or you don't want it, just right click on it and delete that slide. You have objectives, materials, and then you get down here to the procedure. Um, they've created a timeline for your lesson, which I thought was great. Um, you can change everything on here. If this first part needs to be five minutes instead of 10 minutes, change it. Um, one thing about the Google specific templates like this is they use this kind of made up language. So don't get confused by it. I know the first couple times I saw it, um, I thought, what in the heck are they writing? But this Laura Mipsim Dollar, it's just their placeholder. So all you would do is just click on this, 
highlight it, and then replace it with your text to go into that box. Okay, so this is kind of fun. You even get a tab down here at the end where you can list what you want your students to do for homework. So a kind of fun way to share. And then I can click the back arrow. I can go back to my templates and look at something else. Um, one thing I wanted to point out too is with these templates, look at all of them because they're, if you're looking for ideas of activities to do with your students, there's all kinds of interesting stuff here. For instance, under, uh, this is under the personal tab, you've got a yearbook template, you've got a recipe book template. How fun would that be to let your students practice descriptive writing or step-by-step -step writing, technical writing, and have them come up with a recipe or think of a recipe and actually write out the directions to create a classroom recipe book. Um, or a portfolio, maybe a portfolio of different assignments that the students have done so that they can show you in video form rather than just sending you a whole bunch of documents. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can do with these templates. Lots of ideas. Um, I also want to point out before we go any further, um, if you have all, you should have all received an invitation to our workspace, our Facebook workplace. Um, it's a discussion kind of board for the instructors. And there is a place on there to share new tools and new ideas. So if you come up with something really exciting that you're really proud of and you like and you want to share, that's a good place to go and share it with your colleagues around the state. All right, so let's go back to my presentation here. And after templates, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was extras and add-ons. So for this, I'm just going to minimize this so we can see the toolbar. Okay, so you can see I've got a couple of things on here. Um, if you attended our Google Friday session last week with Monse, uh, she talked a lot with Google Docs about add-ons. And in all of the Google tools, whether it's Docs, Sheets, Slides, other things, they're all going to have up in the toolbar a place that says add-ons. And you could just click on that and you can see um, right here are the few of the add-ons that I've already downloaded. Down at the bottom, there's a part that says Get Add-ons, and there's also Manage Add-ons. So we're not going to really go into the Manage Add-ons today. That's more if I wanted to delete things. So you can kind of play with that on your own. If you get a bunch of things and they're clogging up your menu here, you can go to Manage Add-ons and delete the ones you're not using. But what I want to show you today is Get Add-ons. And when we click on that, what it's going to do is open up the G Suite Marketplace. Okay. And there's a lot of add-ons available for all of the G Suite tools. But what it does is because I opened this from Google Slides, everything that it brings up on here, all of these add-ons can be applied to Google Slides. So it kind of sorts them for you. And as Monse said last week, if you look down here at the bottom, with these little icons down here at the bottom, it shows you which tools these add-ons work for. So for instance, this first one, this Lucid chart, has an icon for Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Drive. So that works for all of those as an add-on. Whereas this one here, Pear Deck, it only works with Google Slides. So it's something you might want to look at when you're choosing which ones to download onto your computer or onto your, your uh, Chrome drive. Um, also, the other things that I like that it shows on here are you can see how many people have looked at this. So for instance, Pear Deck, there's been 10 million people plus that have actually looked at this. Doesn't mean they've all downloaded it, but they've gone in here and they've explored it. Um, and then like other apps in different places, it also shows you the ratings that people have given it, how many people have reviewed it. So in this case for Pear Deck, there's been 1,032 people that have written reviews and it has a 3.7 star review rating. So if you're interested in this, you can click on it. 
and it opens up an informational thing. So you can read an overview about what it does. And then you can scroll down here and you can read the different reviews that people have given it. I find it really helpful because sometimes when you're getting stuff off of the marketplace, I know for myself, sometimes I'm just not really sure what it is exactly it's supposed to do or if it's going to work. So I like to read some of the reviews to find out the good and the bad about that app or that add-on. Um, and then you just do install, install if it's something you want to try, and it installs it onto that add-in tab in your presentation. So as you can see, I have not looked at all of these add-ons. Some of them are very specific to um, a specific thing. So like I looked at scratch books. I said, scratch blocks, that looks really interesting. I have no idea what it does, but it sounds interesting. But when I clicked on this, what I found, if my internet loads, is that down here, this add-on helps you generate blocks for MIT's Scratch programming language. Okay, that's not something that I need for teaching my students. And even looking down here more at the reviews or questions, somebody asked, well, how do you make it work? And the developer said, this is only designed to create images for this Scratch Blocks program. Okay, Somebody created this specifically for that program. So it really doesn't apply to us. So you really definitely want to look at, if you have a And so to use it, I would go up here to add-ons and I'm going to choose Magic Rainbow Unicorn Slides and say start. And it opens up a toolbar over here on the side. So what this does is this changes your text from plain old blue or plain old black and white to rainbow colors. And you can choose how many colors you want in this. So for instance, I can click on the start and I could say um, right now it's going from this red, if you could see up here in the top corner, it's going from this red all the way over to this pink. So the second one, oops, let's close that one. The second one where it ends is, oh, up there. So it goes from that color to that color and every shade in between. Um, you can change that. You can have it be all blues or all purples or just red and yellow, however you want it to look. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. You can also choose your shade. So you can go regular, light, lighter, or very light, depending on how you want it to look. You can tell it to change the font color or the highlight of the font. So I could make this black font with a rainbow highlight behind it, should I choose to. Um, and then you can choose the number of rainbows that you want to use. So if you look up here where it says Magic Rainbow Unicorns, this is with one rainbow. There's only one instance of each color, so it has more colors in it. Um, for what I'm going to show you, I want to show you something different. So I'm going to change this to five. Let's see what five rainbows looks like. And then I'm going to select the text that I want to <laughs> turn into a rainbow. I highlight this. And I'm going to say, start the rainbow magic. And there you go. It changes. Now, I've got fewer colors, fewer ranges of the colors, because I'm repeating five times. OK, so that's why you can see specifically five instances of red. Looks like four of green. So you can play with it. It's just something. Sometimes the students like something fun like that. Sometimes we do. Um, so it doesn't really do anything but that. So add-ons generally do one or two things. They don't do a huge amount of things. They just give you some extra options. The next one I want to look at, and this one I just found recently, and I was super excited about it. Um, the next one I want to talk about is it's called Script Slide. So I'm going to open this in the sidebar. 
And what script slide does is it allows me to use my cell phone as a remote control for controlling my slide presentation. So what you do for this is you click on present with slide script and it's going to open my presentation that I'm currently in. Sometimes it takes just a minute because it's going to reset all of the slides. So it's going to open it into a new window. So if you if you can see on here as soon as it's done loading the slides. Okay, so this is the presentation that I'm in and I can still go back to the original tab so I can see it two different ways here now. But in script slides, I can go down here into the toolbar and I can say choose I could choose remote. And what it does is it puts up this QR code. Now on my phone, my cell phone, I can use my camera as a QR code reader. It's built in. If you don't have that option, you can go to your Play Store or your App Store and there's tons of free QR code readers in there. But basically, you just hold your phone up so that it can read the QR code with the camera and it takes you to the website on your phone that controls this particular presentation. So some of the things that I can do um, that are a little bit different from presenting in present mode on your computer is, well, one, I can just, fa I can forward the thing using my cell phone and it's, it's fast and easy. I don't have to find my mouse or anything. But the other thing that I can do is on my screen, I can see the previous slide and I can see the slide that's coming up. So if I'm doing a talk or a lesson or a presentation, I can have an idea of what's coming up next on the screen. The other thing that I really like about this is if you have put any notes, so let's see, which one did I put notes on? This one here. If you guys can see down at the bottom, I've put some notes down here about what I wanted to talk about on that slide. And when I click present from the regular mode, I can no longer see that. Now, if you have um, some stuff loaded in, if you do a lot of presentations, there is a way to mirror your screen onto another device and have your notes on one side and your device, your presentation on another. But I've always found it very complicated to do. This makes it super easy. Um, on my phone, I'm seeing not only the, the slide that's showing on, on the script slide, not only am I seeing the slide that's showing, I'm seeing the slide that I just passed, I'm seeing the slide that's coming forth next, and I'm seeing very clearly my notes that I have for that slide. Whereas the students who are looking at this presentation like you are, can't see any of my notes. So I think that's a really fun thing. The only thing that I haven't figured out on this particular app is how to use links with it. So currently, if I go to a, a slide that has a link, my links aren't working, okay? So just a caution, they're not perfect, but they can be fun. They can be beneficial. So if you're doing a lesson where you're not having to click on links, this is a perfect tool, okay? Once I figure out how to do the links on here, I will happily share it with all of you. And if any of you figure that out, please share it with me because I think this really has potential. Okay, so let's go back to the page we were on. Um, the last thing I want to show you on this page is this This is for apps and add-ons. Oh, yeah, it's in rainbow. That's why I can't see it now. Um, add-ons and apps. So there's an app that I really like called Poll Anywhere. And some of you may have used this before or participated in it. Um, some of you may not. But Poll Anywhere is an app. You do have to download it. So if you're doing it on your computer, you would just go to poll, it's not anywhere, I keep saying that, it's poll everywhere. So poll everywhere.com. 
and it opens up as a website. Um, it does say pricing at the top, but they have a free version. So currently I'm using the free version. There are plans here if you want some of the more advanced features. I've been very happy with just the free features that are on here. Okay, but there is support and how it works. You can explore this a little bit more. Um, and you can log in once, you're, once you've once you created some of these polls. And you can see, I've got a bunch of things on here that I've used for different presentations. So I can go back and see any of the stuff that I've created before, which is kind of nice. Um, but what we're going to do right now is we are going to actually try it. So let me put this back in presentation mode. And this is what it looks like to your students. Um, you could create you create this poll. This particular one is going to create a word cloud. So what I'd like you guys to do is take out your phones or another device. You can either go to this URL on your uh, in your browser, the pollev.com backslash. Kristen W A R I N 019. That will take you to a place where you can answer. Alternately, if you're using your cell phone, you can also just send a text of Kristen W A R I N 019 to the number 22333. Either way will get you to a place where you can type in answers to the question. So if any of you are here on your phone and can't see my screen, the question is using one or two words, well, it's not really a question, but using one or two words, share ideas for using Google Slides with your students. So if any of you want to go in here and respond, it'll give us an opportunity to see how this works. We'll, we'll give this a couple minutes here. You can also put in more than one answer. So if you've already put one in, if you have more answers, go ahead and put those in. So I'm starting to see, you can, you can kind of watch this as you guys are putting stuff in and things change. It's adding new words. Um, you can also, if you, uh, if you want to, you can notice you, people that are agreeing with those. Maybe they're, so flashcards, it looks like several people have put in flashcards. And the more people that put the same thing in, the larger those words are going to get. So by the time you're done with this with your students or whoever you're using this for, you can see the common words, the things that more people agree with. And I see all sorts of ideas on here, vocabulary, surveys, tickets, presenting ideas, flashcards, that's a big one, <laughs> Jeopardy, which we're going to go over in a minute, um, videos, poll everywhere, class presentations, writing, reading, geometry. There's a lot of different things that you can do with Google Slides. So I'm going to go on with the presentation, but if you think of more stuff, go ahead and put it in and we'll come back and look at the end and see if there's any more stuff on here. Vocabulary. I like the idea of doing it with vocabulary. That's a either as a flashcard or um, different ways. I'm going to show you the Jeopardy template next. I forgot to show that to you. Um, and it would be fun for any of that. So let me escape out of here for a minute. And over here, 
this is the Jeopardy template that's in the drive. It's under the NM Delt ones. Um, so somebody shared this with me and I had added it in there. Um, as you can see, it's, it's a template. It tells on here who created it and it gives you the right to use it. You do have to make a copy for yourself. So if you open this, you're gonna wanna click here or go up here to file and say, make a copy. The second page on this is editing directions. So it tells exactly how to go about editing this page. And then here's the exciting part. When we get to the Jeopardy board, and I'm gonna go ahead and present. So your students, once you've created this, can choose a topic. You can, This is all fully um, personalizable. So you can click on this. Let's see, I'm gonna click on 100. So when I click on 100, it takes me to topic one for 100. It gives them the question, whatever you've put in there. And then you click down here and it takes you to the answer. So they can see the answer. And you click again and it takes you back to the board. So let's look at one that I created. So you can kind of see how that's gonna look. Um, back to the first page here. Um, I took off all the extra stuff. Okay? I changed it to Geometry Jeopardy, because that's my topic for this. And on the second page, where this was instructions on how to edit, I've changed this to instructions on how to play the game. So this was for my students' benefit. And then when I go to the board, you can see since this is geometry, I've got in here and I've changed the topics to what I wanted those topics to be. Now I have to warn you, this is a little bit time consuming preparing it, but I did this for my students last week and they loved it. They thought it was a really fun way to review the information that we'd been covering for the last couple of weeks. So I divided, what I did for this is I divided my students into two teams. I went into Google Hangouts on my in my inbox. Um, and I created two groups. I created a team one and a team two. And I just enrolled, I entered the students that I wanted on each team. So I did the work for that. So that by the time they came to class, they were already in a team. Um, then when they played this, I took turns with each team. So they could choose anything on the screen. They could say, okay, I want name that shape for 400. So we would click on 400 and it takes us to the question. So remember, if any of you are familiar with the actual Jeopardy game, they give you the answer and you have to answer with a question. So I did that for my students. I created it in a way that they had to say, what is, and give me the answer. Okay, so for this one, it says, um, a plane figure with at least three straight sides and angles. I gave them two minutes on a timer to come up with an answer. So they could go into their hangout team and discuss what the answer was gonna be. And then at that two minutes, they came back and they would give me an answer. If they gave me the correct answer, they got the points. If they gave me an incorrect answer, I allowed the other team 30 seconds to come up with an answer and steal the money. So I also encouraged both teams to be working on the, prob the problem at the same time. And then once if they've given us an answer, you can click here and you can see the answer. And then click here and go back to the Jeopardy board. Okay, and that actually works a little better in presentation mode. You don't have to do the extra click. So if you're in presentation mode. So if I wanna go to that question, there's the question, click to see the answer, and then one click back to the Jeopardy board. So it's kind of a fun thing to set up and play, and you could do it with almost any kind of review. You could do this with vocabulary. You could do this with math. You could do this with pretty much anything, science, anything you could think of. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation here. We're running a little bit behind. So I've got a couple more things I want to show you. Let's go back to present. Okay, oops, there's my word cloud. So quite a few things. Now, with also, also with this word cloud, you can save it. There is a way to download it and save it after you're done. Um, 
so that you can show it in other activities or other things later on. Okay, now we're going to look at, whoops, too far. All right, we're going to look at explore. So let's exit this. Has any, uh, anybody ever used explore before? This one is really fun. If you are, a, if you are somebody who has used slide presentation a lot, you may have seen it or you may not. I used this for over a year before somebody showed this to me. What the explore button is, it's this little star shaped button down here in the right hand bottom corner of your screen when you're on Google Slides. Okay, it looks like this, only it's gray. Um, and what it does, I'm going to create a new slide here. So I'm just going to create a blank slide. And if I was putting together a presentation, I might put a text box in here. Um, that says, or maybe this is for my class, so welcome to Math 101, whatever we call it, okay? And, but that's kind of boring just to put that, so I want to have a picture too. So I'm going to go up here to insert, say insert image, and I'll, this time I'm going to search the web. I oh, know, that's not good. Let's try that again. I know why it's doing that. No, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, let's close that one. That's probably why. All right, we're going to go try this again. It's always fun to have uh, technology that works. It's even more challenging to find technology that doesn't work. Okay, there we go. So it, it's going to open it up over here. And this is just a search box for the web. So since we're talking about welcome, I'm just going to type in the word welcome. Click on it. And it's going to pull up a bunch of images having to do with welcome that I could use. And looking through here, let's see, I really like this one. Okay, so I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to say insert. Okay, so I've got two things on here. I've got a picture. I've got welcome to math. It's kind of blah. Um, I could take a lot of time and try to create some shapes and colors and stuff to make this slide look better. Or I can click my explore button down here. And what it does is it opens up this bar, this sidebar, and it gives me a bunch of different options that combine those two things together. And some of these are using shapes or tools that are not available anywhere else. It's customizing it. So I could say, well, this looks interesting. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good, but not exactly what I wanted. Let's try this one. Okay, look how much nicer that looks. Just putting that extra image in there. They've worked with the size, with the font, and they've made it into a very professional looking slide. Okay, you can do this with any of your slides. And in fact, most of the ones that I have on here, this one, um, the templates one, this, I did exactly the same thing. I put a picture, I put words, and then I scrolled down here on the side with this to see which one I liked the best. Okay, and that's what I chose. So you could do that. Now, once it does this, you can always undo it if you don't like it. You can use your Control Z or your undo button and change it back to the way it was. Um, the other thing that you can also do is you can add on to this. So if I wanted to put more information on now that this has already done this, I could put another text box down here and maybe put my name and contact information or something like that. The thing that you don't want to do with this when you're first getting started is to put too much information. Okay, so I'm going to open one more box here. We're just going to open a blank one. And I'm going to go back to my insert image, search the web. And this time, let's say, just because I like them, we're going to look at dogs. And it just pulls up a whole bunch of images of dogs. And I can go through here and I can say, oh, that one's cute. And maybe this one. 
and I'll look at these guys with party hats on and let's pick one more these guys okay so I've clicked four it tells me down there that I've picked four images and I could just click insert and it's going to put them all on the page in no particular order they're just piled on top of each other so if I'm doing this myself I could just take these and I could move them around I could take each image and resize it and move it around and all that. Um, or I can look over here and this is kind of a guide to tell you that that's just too much information on one page. I could do it, but it's not going to look very professional. So you want to be careful not to put too much information. So I'm going to delete a couple of these and think that, well, maybe I'll just put some of these on a different slide. Okay, so now I've got two of them. Even though they're piled up here, I can look over here. Can I help? Do you have a question? Okay, I can look over here and I can choose this one. Or I can choose this one or something that looks good. Maybe I like this one. But then I think, oh, I want to put a text box on here. So I'm going to put this and I'm just going to type cute dogs. And now it changed my options over here because now I've got three different fields. I've got two pictures and I've got some words and it gives me some other options to make this look good. Look how nice those look. Even the ones that are overlapping look kind of interesting. So you get more options sometimes different colors look how many options it's given me lots of different i think this one's super cute with the circles it's a fun way to just give you some ideas of how to make what you're putting on the screen look more professional okay i'm going to hurry up here because we are running out of time and i want to show you one last thing okay if you use google classroom Okay, which I do all the time. Um, sometimes you want to make a slide deck or a slide presentation and you want to be able to share it with your students to work on individually on their own at home. Um, and you can always put videos and links and stuff. I've done a whole assignment with that, um, which is what I'm going to show you here. So this first one, it's called Voting in America. And if I were to take this just as a regular slide presentation once it's finished and go up here to share and choose the shareable link, okay, I can copy the link. I can put this as a link into Google Classroom and my students can view it. The problem is when they open it up, this is what they're going to see. They're going to see the sidebar with all of the the smaller um, thumbnail pictures they're going to see the toolbars up here and if they want it they're going to see any speaker notes that i've put on there and if they want to see it in presentation mode they're going to have to come up here and click present which they could do this isn't really a horrible thing but if you're a perfectionist like me i want them to see a nice clean version of this and not have to do the extra clicking and I want, to, I want them to see the slides in order and not be able to see all of this stuff that's coming up because I worked hard to make this uh, assignment that they do in order. So what I can do is I'm going to go up here to File. And down here towards the bottom, there's a tab that says Publish to the Web. Okay, and what that does, if I click on it, it's going to open up a box. And you have the option of either doing this as a link or embedding your presentation. If you were doing this for something like a website or anything like that, you could use this embed tool and you can you can turn this into a looping slide presentation of images or pictures or whatever to put on a website. But for Google Classroom, you're going to want to stick with link. Now here, this first option says advanced auto advance slides. So it's going to auto advance the slides automatically. 
But if you're doing this for a slide present, or like a picture show, you might want it to go fairly fast every five seconds or every 10 seconds. But when we're doing this as an assignment for our students, we want them to have a little bit more time on each slide. So you're going to want to click every minute. That's the largest one. Keep in mind that they can pause this as it's going, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but just choose that longest one so that they have time to interact with the slide. You also have an option here to start the slideshow as soon as the player loads. If you check that, as soon as they get into it, that slide presentation will start. If you leave it blank, it'll start as a paused image, and they'll have to click on it to get it to start. Um, you also have an option to make this into a loop so that once they get to the end, it'll start back at the beginning again. It just depends on what application you're using this for. I generally leave, would leave both of those unchecked for what I'm using it for. You have a link here. You're going to want to cop copy the link. Now, mine is already published. So I'm going to show you what the published site looks like and what the difference is. Um, however, if you get to a point where you're done with it, you don't want people to access it anymore, you can come back in here and you can stop the publishing. So you can unpublish it. You'll still have access to it, but nobody else will. Okay, so once you've copied that link, you go into your Google Classroom, you create your assignment, and you put it as a link in there. And so what they're going to see at that point is, let's see, this one? No, it's this. No, oh, I don't have it. Okay, let's go back here so I can open that up. So here I've put the published version. And so now when they open it up, if you use the link for the published version, they're not going to see any of the thumbnails over on the side. They're not going to see all your toolbars and all that. They see a nice clean presentation. And the only tools that they have for this are going to be able to move it forward to start or play and pause or they can slip skip from slide to slide if they want to but it's a little it's not as obvious as when that toolbar is over there and so they can just start clicking through this and following your directions for that assignment if they accidentally go too far forward they can go back okay now this is in pause if you can see this down here in the bottom it still has a play button so at this point it's never going to just forward automatically on its own which i personally don't want it to do in an assignment but if they do want it to run on its own they can click play and every minute it will forward through this um, the other thing with this is that all of the links work. So here, this is a link. They can click on that, and it's going to open this document that I want them to read. Um, I also have a video in here. So when we get here to the video, they've got a play button. They can play the video. They can pause it. They can have all the interaction, fast forwarding and everything with the video. Um, but it's here as a link. So there's another link here that they can click on. Um, I've got instructions for homework and activities in here, discussion things. Um, I put a poll anywhere for them. They can do that. Um, so it's, it's just really nice to have the ability to give them a slide presentation with all that extra kind of gunk around it that you use when you're creating it. Um, so that's what I've got for you today. Um, I am super excited. I love Google Slides. I use it all the time. I hope you do too. If you have any questions, comments, criticism, anything like that, if it's the criticism, keep it to yourself. No, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but if you do have any questions or anything that we haven't answered here today, feel free to email me. My email address is k-w-a-r-i-n-g at nmdelt.org. And I will do my best to either give you the answer or if I don't know it, find it. <laughs> so that being said, does anybody have any questions that I can answer today before we shut down for the day? Kristen, we do have two questions on here. OK. So earlier, someone asked, do you have to be connected to the internet to use script slide? That's a good question. I 
don't know that. Um, I believe there's probably a way to set it up to work online, offline, um, but I don't know that for sure. Um, that's definitely something, a good question that I can look into. Perfect. And then we had a second question. Um, have you ever used Jeopardy in an online class? I did. That's what I just did last week. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I had I divided them into teams. Um, I had I think I had nine students in that online class, so it wasn't huge, but I divided them into two teams. I went into my Google Hangouts and I created a group hangout that was titled Team One and a group hangout that was titled Team Two. That way, I was in both of those hangouts so that I could see the discussions going on. And then I just invited each of the students that I wanted to have on those teams. So I had four students in one chat and five students in the other. And um, I did the clicking. So you, you yourself will have to do the clicking on the Jeopardy screen. Let me go back there for a second. So find my Jeopardy game. Yeah, so when it's in presentation mode, you do the clicking. So you're going to ask them, I had them choose a team leader. So I had one main spokesperson for the team and they would talk for just a minute and decide what they wanted to ask. And so they would come on and say, maybe they wanted circles for 100. I was like, okay, I'll click on circles for 100 and then they can see the question. Then I started a timer on my phone. Okay, the timer was set for two minutes and they would go into their chat rooms or their chats and discuss what the answer to this was. They'd come back when they were done or at the end of the two minutes and give me an answer. Then I would go and show them what the answer that I had on here was. And I just had, I used a whiteboard, a portable whiteboard on the side to keep track of how many points they've earned or how much dollars in this case they had earned. Um, the only issue that I uh, see with this is that once I've done, once they've done a question, it doesn't change a color. And we've given uh, Google a lot of feedback on that. So maybe someday soon they will fix that. Um, so you don't have any marking on here that shows which ones you've answered. So my brilliant or not so brilliant solution was I have an older computer monitor here that I have my Jeopardy board showing on and I used a dry erase marker and I just flicked a little line through each one as I have a Jeopardy that does, oh, Michael says he has one that does a white out thing. I'll have to check that out. But I just marked them off on my screen and then I used some cleaner and wiped it off at the end. It came off really good. Um, I'm not telling you guys to do that because I can't guarantee it's going to come off of all of your computers, but that's why I use the old one and not my new one. Um, but that's what I did. So we went through, it took quite a while. It was about an hour and a half worth of the game to get through all of the questions. And then we did the final Jeopardy game and they loved it. They had a really good time. We had a couple of glitches here and there and I had to read off several times what was still available to the students but we got through it and they all told me every student that participated said that they had a really good time and that they really liked doing review that way nice um one more question are the sure. google fridays archived yet at nmdelt.org that is not the case and i need to do that okay <laughs> so you Yes, they will be soon. Any other questions? Okay, so I just I just want to advertise for you guys real quick. If you haven't done them before, if this is your first time, Google Fridays um, for the time being are going to be every Friday at noon. We'll hopefully have a new topic for you and the webinars will be anywhere from a half an hour to one hour long. So please join us. The link is always the same. This uh, flyer is up on the website. So you can always go in there and find the uh, links to get into this webinar.
Okay, so hopefully I hope to see you back here next Friday. And you guys all have a wonderful day and a safe, healthy, wonderful weekend. Thank you, Kristen. That was wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and we will see you next Friday.